Buenas noches. Buenas noches. No sé si me puede confirmar, por favor, si me escucha. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Miss. So, uh, we're going to start with an activity. Uh, this activity is going to be a word search. So, um, I will share the link here uh, in the video conference. So, first of all, welcome, Miss. Uh, and tonight, we're going to be working on section number five. That's mean the last section of, 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 the, of the week. Um, so, as you remember, I don't know if you received the, the notification of English Corporativo. We are in last week of this course, and it's supposed that at the end of this week, you have to complete at least the, un, the 100% or, well, in this case, the 80% of all the exercises that you have on the platform. So uh, it's supposed that for uh, this week, so before uh, Thursday, you must complete it, okay? So let's start with that, with the exercise. I will share here uh, the link of the word search. Just give me a second. Okay, uh, last class, I remember that we were discussing about the use of regular verbs. Uh, so now you have here some irregular words that you have to look look for in this word search. So um, we have a list of around uh, 20 uh, irregular words that we must find there. So you're going to have 10 minutes in order to complete it. Go ahead.
uh, please let me know if you finish this exercise, okay? I'm missing only five. I'm finished. Okay, uh, very good. So we're going to move to the exercises that we have on the platform. Um, it, as you know, we're going to be working on section number five. We're going to see the first lesson objective and, and it says, in this class, you will learn about five different cultures uh, around the world. Uh, for that reason, we have a video. It, that, uh, it says cross-cultural experience. There we are going to listen, we're going to see um, these five uh, cultural uh, cultural experience that um, are mentioned in in the lesson objective. Okay, so pay attention to it. I'm going to play it right now, and later on we're going to be discussing all this. Okay, is it clear? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, very good. So pay attention to it. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camilla and I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four, and I've lived here ever since. 
Two years ago I went to Sweden and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different because here in Brazil we kiss on the cheek and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that. It was strange. <laughs> This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private. And so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus. And sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman and she was making me lunch one day and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day with the beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepoztlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Until next time, this is Chris Brooks for Travel World, bidding you bon voyage. Okay, yeah, I'll ask you. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, I, I was telling you that um, this was a travel world or cultural experience, and he, he mentioned three of them. I don't know if you remember the first one. Well, you remember the or experience. The experience, the, the, the ones that we have here in the video. Public transportation in Lima. In Lima. That was the second one. And what about the first one? You remember? I remember, but I don't know how to say <laughs> um, About personal space. Yes, personal um, space, okay. Personal space. The second one was in, in Lima. Okay, about the about the bus transportation. And the third one? About the food in Mexico. 
about the food. Yes, okay, very good. So there we have three different uh, cultural experience. So he mentioned the, uh, those three. What are we going to do right now? Uh, you are going to prepare uh, something about cultural experience. You are going to take one uh, country. I don't know if you want to take England. I don't know if you want to take uh, Canada. Uh, so you can be more specific and say it like Hawaii, uh, Argentina. I don't know. You decide. You decide uh, what is the country you want to talk about. And you have to look for, you have to research um, about the culture, some cultural experience they have. So uh, you can mention uh, something about food. You can mention something about um, the, the way they speak, uh, the way they, they uh, wear. So I don't know, you, you, you just have to look for something. Public uh, transportation. Sorry, sir. What do you say? About public transportation. You you can you can find something like that too if if you want. So, but the idea is create in. I mean, the idea is to create a presentation or create a an idea about that culture, and later on, what you are going to be doing here in this video conference is use to uh, sharing that information with us. So, is it clear? Yes. Kind of, okay, Mr. Mr. Rivera said kind of. Um, mm. Bien, Mr. Rivera, lo que vamos a hacer es simplemente investigar sobre este, una experiencia, experiencias culturales de otros países. Usted puede elegir Argentina, Canadá, Eh, puede ser un poquito más específico, por ejemplo, Hawái. Eh, si usted quiere, pues, este, puede incluir lugares como España, Inglaterra, China, Japón, la, la, Japón este, Rusia. La idea es investigar acerca de la cultura de esos países, qué les gusta, qué no les gusta, eh, cuáles son algunas características culturales que podemos evidenciar de eh, ahí y también podemos mencionar algo de su vestimenta, cómo es su vestimenta, cosas así. ¿sí? La idea es crear una presentación, es decir, de esa experiencia cultural eh, que nosotros, o de esas experiencias culturales que nosotros vamos a investigar, que vamos a, a buscar. ¿Sí? ¿Está claro ahora? Okay. Yo les voy a dar 10 minutos, perdón. Yo les voy a dar 10 minutos para que busquen y después de 10 minutos voy a ir nombrando uno por uno y me van a ir compartiendo qué es lo que encontraron de ese país. ¿Sí? Por ejemplo, Mr. Rivera, ¿usted de qué país va a hablar? Eh, maybe Colombia o Curazao. Colombia o Curazao. Eh, Mr. Jaco. Guatemala. Guatemala. Miss Castro. Jamaica. Jamaica. Uh, Miss Durán. Nicaragua. Nicaragua. And Miss Rodríguez. Mexico. Mexico. Okay, so there you have. Um, let's start working on it and then we are going to be sharing the information that we found. See you in 10 minutes.
No hay programa. Okay, uh, how are you doing? Do you find something? You need more time? Yes, yes, please. Okay, okay. Two minutes more. Okay, okay, very good, sir.
I finish. Okay, so uh, Mr. Hako, you said you're ready. Let's okay. listen what do you have about uh, the country you, you, you choose. Okay. Okay. Um, there are well, Guatemala, there are and traditional of Guatemalan culture, mood, throw, millennium and cover terrain that in a country smaller than Louisiana include includes the Belgian volcanoes, a swelling tropical coasts, dense jungle and chilly highlands. This is such a wide array of cool culture in Guatemala to appreciate it. Guatemala cuisine the has flavors of the country, Mayan and Spanish, African and Caribbean culture, corn, beans, rice, rice, beef, chicken, pork, cheese, and tortillas from the black bone of most uh, from the black bone of most Guatemala dishes. Most meal will include some components of the country, fresh tropical fruits. Per, perhaps the most popular dish in Guatemala is pepian. I don't know, I, I, I don't know what is pepian. <laughs> Me neither, I, I don't know. I don't know what is that. I would try to Google it. Yeah, okay, only that then. Uh, only that, okay, okay. Only that. Yeah, I think this is Pepin. This is like, like a uh, sauce with chicken. It's similar to gallo and chicha. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, it's, it's similar, right? Yes. Okay, so there we have it. Okay, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, who's, who's going to be the next one? Me, teacher. Okay, sir, tell me. Okay, it's about the island Curaçao. Curaçao oh, okay. is a Dutch island in the Canadian. It's now for its beach located in coast and its extensive coral reef with mm. abundant marine fauna. The capital, Westland, has a colonial architecture, architecture with variety of color. The most important construction in the island are Queen Emma Floating Bridge and the Mike Israel Synagogue. Curaçao is home to more than a hundred ethnic groups, making the island culture very versatile and diverse. The national language is Dutch and second is English. Its food is very varied with dishes with fish and rice. And, and Curaçao is, is known for the international drink is Curaçao cocktail. Okay, okay. So very good. Okay, sir. Um, well, we have listened to Mr. Rivera and also to Mr. Hako. Uh, I see here that there are five people in this video conference. Uh, let me see who are there. So we have to Miss Duran, Mr. Rodriguez, and Miss Castro. So, 
who is going to be the next one? Okay, Ms. Castro, go ahead. Um, yeah, Maika is a um, country located in the Caribbean. Caribbean Sea. Has forests, mountains, and beautiful beaches. It's beaches. It's famous for being the birthplace of worldwide singer Bob Marley. This country is known for the production of sugar. Um, about Bob Marley, has, they, they has a museum in honor of him. The weather is really nice, about 32 grades. It's hot almost all year. The people are hardworking, humble, and kind. The typical food is ackee and salt fish. And they have a front Jamaican. Uh, they do produce their own coffee called Blue Mountain Coffee. It's all. Okay, okay. Uh, we, uh, what, uh, I mean, what is the uh, uh, traditional dish there? Uh, <clears throat> Aki and salt fish. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know what is Aki. Aki. Aha, Aki. A, C, K, E, E. Okay. Like that? A, A, C, K, E, E. It's no, no, it's A C. Okay, AC. All right, uh, I can listen you all. Let's see. Oh, E E. A C K E E. Oh, this is Aki. Yes. It's like like eggs with chicken, <laughs> right? Yes. With vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tomato. I think it's pineapple. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think is this is X. This, this is these are X. Okay. That's what I think. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's let's listen uh, the next one. So we we saw what is Aki. Me teacher. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about the uh, culture Mexican. Okay. Uh, uh, Specifically, the dance, music and dance. Music and dance, okay. okay. Music and dance feature heavily in Mexican culture. Mariachi music dates back to the 18th century and is well known and loved. Traditional mariachi bands consist of five musicians wearing a charro suit. If you haven't already heard the song La Cucaracha, <laughs> then you probably will at some stage of your Mexican travels. As it, it, as it is played by mariachi bands everywhere, on the street and in restaurants. Okay. Folk dancing is also common throughout Mexico. The Jarabe Tapatillo, Mexican hat dance, is one of the iconic dance of Mexico. Probably the country's national dance it celebrates courtship and the dancing in performance around some a sombrero. Okay, okay, very good. And what is the traditional dish? Tacos, right? Ah, tacos, tacos, and uh, what 
to the killers. Oh, okay. Okay, very good. Yes. Uh, okay. So, yeah. thank you, sir. I don't know if someone else is missing. Me, teacher. You. Okay, miss. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to talk about Mother Day in Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Uh, Okay. Yes, in Nicaragua, uh, the Mother Day is one of the most important of years. Uh, I all the songs and dower give the mother a cake. If if the mother has a uh, fine song, uh, all have to bring a cake. Is is the is the special tradition. Okay, okay. So, very good. Thank you, Miss. Is someone else missing? Nobody else. Okay, so we're going to move to the next lesson objective. It says, in this class, you will learn how to use noun phrases containing relative clauses. Uh, before talking about that, um, <clears throat> we are going to watch a video about um, how to construct sentences using noun phrases. Okay, so that, that's the first thing that we are going to study uh, here in this video. So pay attention. Hi, everyone. Can you hear the audio? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes. So, go, I will play it right now and please pay attention to it. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. So, let's get started by me asking you a few questions which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class. When traveling to another country, would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? By the end of this class, you'll be able to use noun phrases which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. So let me present some structure at this particular moment. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relative clauses. Uh, first, we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. Uh, then we'll move into the object, probably the object. I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions first we're going to have a subject so in this case this subject becomes one thing uh, then this is followed by a relative clause I really miss and then we're going to have the uh, verb to be uh, in this case as you can see is the verb to be is and then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase if you will so let's write that specific sentence down and then we're going to try to make sense of it as I mentioned so let me do that at this point. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, one thing, sorry, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I've I've colored that in green so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a what's a uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. And then this is followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you will. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic could it can become a little bit confusing but if we understand uh, this structure it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete so let me include um, lots of relative clauses all right and 
what we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense of it by we're going to try to uh, make different synthesis with them. All right. So um, I mentioned one thing. Um, you could you could express this idea by saying something, right? Uh, you could also say two people, or you can say two things, or you can say uh, two things that I miss would be, and then you mention what those things are. Um, but um, let's try to make sense of it here. Um, so one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. So I've included uh, a few relative clauses. And let me get you to answer this by me asking you the question. So what would you be nervous about? when traveling to another country what would you be anxious about what would you be comfortable with what would you be curious about what would you be enthusiastic about what would you be fascinated by um, let's say that we choose the country uh, maybe France all right so France seems like a very touristic place and I think that a lot of people would like to travel to this particular country so let's do that second one one thing I'd be nervous about is Right, that's going to follow the bird to be. And maybe for me is getting lost. All right. Uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun. Uh, the relative clause is I'll be nervous about. Then this is followed by the bird to be. And then this will be followed by the object of the sentence. Okay. So for me, one thing I'd really be nervous about, or one thing I'd be nervous about, is getting lost. One thing I'd be anxious about is getting to know this new city. One thing I'd be comfortable with is the weather. One thing I'd be curious about is learning about the country's culture. One thing I'd be enthusiastic about is learning the new language. One thing I'll be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city. And so you get the idea. Um, so if we follow this pattern, subject plus relative clause plus verb to be plus the object, then we shouldn't uh, have any difficulties expressing these ideas. Uh, just one last thing that I would like to mention that if I change the subject to plural, Okay. I will need to change the verb to be, and I will also need to change the object because both things need to be plural. They need to match with whatever the subject is. So for example, two things I really miss are my mom's cooking and my room at home. Okay, that's just to give you an example. And if the subject changes to something plural, then you will need to do the same for uh, the rest. So what I would like for you to do now is to practice this concept, but now answer this in your own way. So what would you be nervous about? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? And try to give as many responses as you possibly can. Try to write these ideas down as this will help you learn this concept. Okay, guys. Um, what we're going to be working on. So as you listen, as uh, you listen to him, uh, we're going to be completing these um, sentences, and this is gonna be um, the last activity. So I think we're going to. Um, well, this is gonna be the end of, of the video conference because we don't have enough time. We had uh, eight fifty-four. So. What you have to do here is just to complete the sentences. And you have to send all those sentences uh, through uh, the group uh, the group that we have on WhatsApp. So in what you must, or what you have to answer there is something that you think uh, can complete each of the sentences. For instance, it says, um, I've, I've been nervous about is, and in this case, you're going to be adding a, the object of the sentence. I don't know if it's clear. Simplemente es este, completar la oración que tenemos aquí de, de acuerdo 
pues ustedes lo quieran completar a su propia manera. No sé si queda claro lo que vamos a hacer. Sí, va, esto lo van a enviar al grupo de WhatsApp. Así que eso sería todo. No sé si alguien tiene alguna consulta. Okay. Everything is clear. So, um, I will say in Spanish. Um, hoy enviaron una notificación que es necesario que completemos el 100% o el, al menos el 80%, diría yo, de, las, eh, de los ejercicios que están en la plataforma. Si no los han terminado, terminen, los terminen el, el examen, eh, el examen de, de medio curso, el examen final, termínenlos, terminen los ejercicios de cada una de las secciones que, que hemos visto durante todas estas semanas anteriores. Eh, la idea es completarlos hasta tener el 80%, ¿sí? Esa es la meta. Si usted quiere sacar un 10, pues perfecto, lo puede hacer también, pero la meta es el 80%. Ahí tienen ustedes el, eh, el comunicado pues, que les compartieron. Así que solamente recordarles, ¿verdad? Eso. No sé si no hay más preguntas. Bueno, dijeron que ya no hay más preguntas. Entonces estoy por finalizada la videoconferencia. Los estaríamos viendo la, el día de mañana. Uh, siempre a las 8 en punto. ¿De acuerdo? Okay, so, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Okay, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, good night. Good blessings for everybody.